Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. Will the Treasurer outline to the House how the Morrison McCormick government is supporting farmers and rural communities who are doing it tough in, in these drought conditions? The Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Flynn for his question. And he comes from the great state of Queensland, which sees two thirds of that state impacted by drought. And in New South Wales, 95 per cent of that state is impacted by drought. Now, Mr. Speaker, we've had droughts before. We had a Federation drought. Uh, we had a significant drought during the Second World War, and we had the Millennium Drought in the 2000s. But I had this privilege to go with the member for Maranoa to Inverell in the member for New England seat, as well as Stanthorpe and in Warwick in the member for Maranoa seat. And when you meet with the farmers and with the families who are affected by this drought, they tell you that this is the worst drought in living memory, Mr. Speaker. And that is why this government is standing by them. In fact, we met Dino in Stanthorpe, uh, who is an apple orchardist who has to truck in a hundred loads of water each week at a cost of around $40,000 and has had to pull 10,000 trees out of the ground just to keep the sustainability of his orchard, Mr Speaker. And so the support that we are providing, the drought-stricken areas, are in three parts, as the Prime Minister outlined. Firstly, it's the direct um, income support, the farm household allowance, Mr. Speaker, which we have lifted and also reduced significantly the red tape burden. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, it's the support for the communities, the support that we are giving the local government areas um, through the Drought Communities Program. And this money is being able to be spent with local tradies who are updating the stables at the Rodeo areas, Mr. Speaker. Uh, whether it's upgrading the cricketing pavilion, or we heard one story where they put around a fence to prevent the kangaroos coming onto the airport. Yep. All of this is just creating jobs in an area where, which is doing it really tough. We've also put more money into uh, financial counsellors to provide the support to people who need it, as well as mental health support, which is critical at this time. And, Mr Speaker, there's also the water infrastructure. The water infrastructure, we're going to have a $5 billion uh, future drought fund, which will be providing $100 million a year from mid next year. And most recently, the announcement by the Prime Minister with the Premier of New South Wales and the Deputy Prime Minister and the Leader of the National Party in New South Wales, a joint commitment to a $1 billion on water infrastructure to help ensure the future viability of these communities. Mr Speaker, Dorothy McKellar spoke about a sunburnt country of droughts and flooding rains when she, she spoke for all of us. But what we need to do is continue to provide the support to the people who need it most, and that is in the drought-stricken communities the across our great has country. Concluded. I call the member for Lilly. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Why won't the Prime Minister confirm that household debt is now nearly double disposable income, higher than it has ever been? Yeah. The Treasurer has the call. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me. Uh, Members on my let, left. The member for Lilly, uh, the member for Lilly, who may have not learned any economics from her predecessor, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> but the value of households. We hope not. Uh, we, 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 we hope not. We hope. The George Costanza for rule. Mr. The George Costanza rule. Now, Mr. Speaker, the value of household sector assets is five times, as the Prime Minister said, greater than its debts, and importantly, around three quarters of the debt is owed by households in the top 40 per cent of the income distribution, Mr Speaker, and they generally have a higher capacity to make repayments and are less likely to go through a period of sustained unemployment, Mr Speaker. Low interest rates has also meant that total household mortgage payments as a proportion of disposable income are lower than they were in the mid-2000s. Now, Mr Speaker, I direct the honourable member to the October 2019, this year, RBA Financial Stability Review, which said that housing debt is generally well collateralised. Mr. Speaker. Furthermore, around three quarters of the debt is owed by households in the top 40 per cent of the income distribution. Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, 
We, all, we know that there is one policy which would hurt the households of Australian families and Members people who own their own home. And Mr Speaker, you know what it is? What is it? It's Labor's housing tax, Mr Speaker, a tax which the member for Rankin said he was proud and pleased of, Mr Speaker. Now, the member for Rankin has joined that long list of Labor luminaries trying to make their warned. push for the leadership, Mr Speaker, out there making a speech following the member for Maribyrnong, the member for Karai, the member for Hunter. Mr Speaker, there are a lot of people looking, looking behind, looking, looking at uh, the Leader of the Opposition, Mr Speaker, but the reality is Labor's housing tax would hurt the incomes of Australian families. It's still on Labor's books, despite their election loss, and only the coalition can be trusted to reduce taxes for Australian families and to help ensure a stronger economy for all. Well,